Hello everyone, this is Twana from the Haystack team at DeepSet, and today I'm going to be showing you a demo that one of my colleagues, Stefano, created, which is available on Hugging Face Spaces called AutoQuizzer. It's a pretty unique application of LLMs, if you ask me, so let's dive in. So AutoQuizzer is available for you to try out and play around, um, and it's basically a demo where we're using Llama 3 8B Instruct. We serve it with Grok to do a few things. First, we ask the LLM to generate a quiz and we actually see the quiz. It's a Gradio app and Gradio builds out the quiz for us. And then we ask uh, either ourselves to create, to answer the questions of the quiz, or we ask uh, Llama 3 itself to solve the quiz it generated itself. And we either ask it to do that just on its own with its internal knowledge base or with WebRag. So let's give it a go. So we start like this. You can either write your own URL here or select one of the pre-provided uh, ones. And I'm going to go ahead and generate a quiz about Fiat Panda. And there we have it. We get a quiz with five questions and options. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to answer this at random because I know nothing about Fiat Pandas. And then I can submit my answers and I did pretty good actually. So I got 80%. And then we can say, let the LLM play. And then here we have two options. We call them a closed book exam or web rag. The closed book exam is simply the LLM responding to quiz questions itself um, with no help. And then web rag is when we're first doing web retrieval and the LLM is answering questions based off of the contents of those documents that was retrieved from the web. In an ideal world, as you see here, it does a lot better when it has the help. If you want to, you can also drop this down and see what the correct answers should have been and what the LLM responded. All of this is available in a public repository that Stefano has created, and you have all of the information about how these pipelines were created, as well as instructions on how you can run this application locally. It is a Gradio app, so you simply say gradioapp.py and you can have this uh, application running locally on your machine. All right, so let's dive in and see how he actually built this and I hope I do justice. Okay, so what's happening is we actually have three independent Haystack pipelines here. The first and the second we're going to have a look at um, in a notebook. And then the third, I've created the code for it, but you can complete it yourself if you want to. All right, so the first pipeline. The first pipeline is where we're actually generating the quiz. And we're using Llama 3 A to B Instruct to generate the quiz. But the way it goes is we first have a link content fetcher, which is expecting URLs. We then uh, hand those over to an HTML converter that can convert the contents of those URLs into a format that Haystack can actually use. And then we create a prompt out of that content. We'll see what that prompt looks like. And for this, we use the prompt builder in Haystack. Finally, we have the generator, so the LLM. And then the very last step is actually a quiz parser. Haystack does not come with a quiz parser. So what Stefano has done, he's created his own custom component. We'll look at why and we'll look at what this component actually does as well. The second pipeline is very simple. We simply have a prompt with a prompt builder. Presumably this prompt has got, got some questions and got some um, in instructions on how the question should be answered. And then simply we send that prompt over to the LLM. And then the last one, which we won't look in detail, is where we first do web search. So this entire pipeline is actually, you can call web rag if you like. We ask um, a web search component. In this example, we're going to be using Serpa Dev to first look up some content about a certain topic, something. And then we augment the prompt that we hand over to the LLM with the contents of those documents. So the LLM actually has a lot more help to answer the questions. But let's dive in and let's start with the first pipeline. The first thing that we'll do in this notebook, which I'm going to skip now, is we import all of our dependencies. And because we're going to be using Grok and Serpa Dev, if you don't have those in your environment variables, this code block will ask you to add them. If you don't want to build the web rag, you can simply just comment this bit out. 
All right, let's have a look at the quiz generation pipeline. So the first thing you're going to notice here is that we have a pretty hefty prompt. Let's make this a bit bigger. And the prompt goes as follows. Given the following text, create a five multiple choice quiz in JSON format. Each question should have four different options and so on. And then we also actually provide an example of what we want that JSON format to look like. So we're already telling it we want to know the topic, we want to have a list of questions, every question should have a question, options, and the right option or correct option, if you will. Finally, we're actually providing it with the text. So Haystack Pipelines, we use Jinja2 templating, uh, which is pretty handy because we can have all these like for loops, if statements, and so on. And here you can see that we're going to be looping through something called documents. Now we're going to use this prompt in a component called the prompt builder, which is going to mean that documents is going to be an input that the prompt builder expects. And we're going to simply be augmenting this entire prompt with the contents of those documents. For simplicity, we're also truncating it here, but if you like, you can remove that and see how it goes. Next, let's look at this block. Uh, here we're adding all of the required components to our pipeline, but we are not connecting them to each other yet. But let's look through what we have. So we're giving it the link content fetcher. We're giving it the name link content fetcher. We're going to give the HTML to document the name HTML converter. Here we have our prompt builder. So here we're actually providing this prompt to our prompt builder. And then finally, we have a generator. Now I told you we're going to be using Grok, but turns out that the APIs are pretty similar. So we can actually use something we already have in Haystack, which is the OpenAI generator. But the only thing you have to do here is provide your Grok credentials to make sure that you're using the model you're serving with Grok. And here we provide the model name. And then the final block here is simply connecting those components in the way you want to see your application run. Now let's run this and you'll notice that I haven't added this quiz parser yet, because first I want to show you what happens when we run this pipeline as is without a custom quiz parser. If you want to check what your pipeline looks like, I just want to show you that we have this nice utility. You can just say dot show and then you can check if your pipeline is created in the way you expect it to look like. And you can see here that the first component is link content fetcher and that is expecting URLs. So I know to run this pipeline, I need to provide URLs to this link content fetcher. All right, so I'm going to run this pipeline and I'm going to ask it to generate a quiz about um, capybaras. Here's a URL from the Rainforest Alliance and I'm going to get a result and I'm going to assign it to quiz and then I can print out. So I know that the last thing here is generator. So it's going to be in generator replies. And here we have it. Here we have a quiz. Great. But as you can see, there are probably things here that is not really useful for us to actually build the quiz. For example, there's this here are the five multiple choice quizzes in JSON format. Um, let me know if you need anything else like this stuff we don't actually need. So this is exactly why Stefano has created a custom component. So let's see what that does. Before I dive into what the custom component actually does, a quick recap on how you can create a custom component. So for something to be a component for a Haystack pipeline, we actually only have a few requirements. It has to be a class that has a component decorator. It has to have a run method and that run method has to return a dictionary. The inputs to the run method become inputs that that component effectively is expecting. So we're basically saying it's expecting something called replies of type list of string. The last thing you should know about components in Haystack is that each of them has to declare the output types around the run method. And this is used later on to actually validate that the pipeline has got the correct connections. And that's, you know, this one is saying I'm outputting something called quiz in the form of a dict. So the only things that can connect to it, really, I can connect something that's expecting a dict to this quiz parser. But what's happening here is Stefano is simply 
looked at where the JSON part, so the quiz part, begins and ends in this uh, reply or this replies. And then also he's used a simple utility JSON repair to repair the JSON if there's anything wrong with it. So let's initialize one and then let's actually provide the results of the previous pipeline to the uh, parser and let's see what we get. And it's pretty good. So we get something called quiz because we know this is outputting something called quiz. And in it, we have the topic, the questions, um, the options and the right option. Perfect. So now we actually have something that A, we can probably forward this to Gradio for it to actually build out that front end, that UI of the quiz if you want to. But also B, it's a lot easier to actually run different pipelines to actually solve the quiz. It's probably a lot more useful though, if we just do this in one go instead of me running the parser separately. So here what we do is simply add and connect the component to the original pipeline we had. And we can even show it. And you can see here that we have that original pipeline that you saw earlier. So let's run that. And then we can just check. And here we have it. We have our quiz and we're ready to ask an LLM to solve the quiz. Okay, so let's build the second pipeline. This is the pipeline where we are going to ask an LLM to solve a question. So the important thing is here, as you can see in this prompt, we're providing it with a topic, answer the following questions, specifying one of the options. The topic is topic. And we're only providing one question and the question is being added to question and then the options. Now, this means that every time we have this prompt forwarded to an LLM, it's only actually solving one of the questions at a time. And then we can provide this prompt as a prompt builder and forward that prompt to actually the same generator. We're using the same model. And then we connect these two components. So this means that I actually have to run this pipeline in a root loop for every question that this quiz has. So this block is doing exactly that. And what we're doing is we're going to build out this answers list and we're going to be looping through all of the questions in our quiz. And then we're going to check what the answers are. So the answers are D, C, 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 D. We can have a look at the quiz up top here. So it answered what, uh, let's go with, uh, what is the approximate weight of a capybara? And its guess is D, I think it said D, and so on. Um, but since we have also the right options in the quiz, this is an extra bit of code block we have here, where if I execute this, we're actually gonna check every question and we're gonna print out when the, uh, the LLM answers correctly and we're also gonna print out when the LLM answers wrong, but also gonna provide the correct answer. And we're going to get a final score and 60%, not bad. In an ideal world, you can go ahead and create this pipeline. The only thing missing here is actually running the pipeline in that loop. And you can see if it gets a better score. So hope you enjoyed that. And next time I'll go through a different demo. Thank you.